Ah, there you are, traveler. Come inside, hang up your coat, put your feet by the fire, and I shall bring you what you so desperately seek. Rude tales of magic. Welcome back to Rude Tales of Magic. When last we left our heroes, they had liberated Toilton and given them the gift of vacations. Meanwhile, two of our heroes had been on a eventful date, but now it's night, day's worst enemy. That's right, the group now travels, getting back onto that road, heading northeast to Brian Doyle Falls. So yeah, they uh, you know once uh, Prolapse pushed the pushed the boss out of the window, uh, everyone came around pretty quickly. Wow! Oh. They didn't um, lament his passing. I don't know that anyone knows yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about uh, De Bonesby and whether or not he's coming back? Hello. Hi. What do you want to talk about? I just was wondering, you know. How De Bonesy's feeling? It's really weird getting to talk to you guys because, like, I've been listening and seeing you for, like, a long time now. And it's like, I feel like I know you, but you don't know me. Or my brother, Goatsy. I'm Goatsy! Yeah. It seems like you guys like us, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good time out here. Better than being dead in the box. Was that you? Did you come from being dead? Oh, yeah, that's right, because you're the body parts. Yeah, Frederick lost part of his face and part of his hand. Yeah. Then Brian Fuck. Yeah. Put us in there instead. Oh, Brian Fuck was such a disappointment. Yeah, you guys had like a like a uh, like a, like sparks. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, we body swapped for the first time. Yeah. And, you know, punched him. Yeah. To death. Real. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Later, Brian. <laughs> yeah, it was like, bye-bye. Exactly. <laughs> you were like, oh, b- bye-bye, Brian. Bye, Brian. <laughs> and then he was fucking no more. Yeah, that's cool that we all love to kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for real, it's like, can you just say hi for me to Mr. DeBosby? Yeah, is he trapped? He's sort of like hiding in there. So he's hiding. Yeah, he's hiding. He's keeping us from using all of his best magical spells, which is a real bummer. Still, better to be alive. Uh, That's classic to Bonesby. He's fine, but the, the Bonesby will take time off every once in a while and hide in his little hole. But he comes out eventually. You just need to give the man some respect and some space. One thing I like to give all of my friends, respect and space. <laughs> You're, laugh- you're laughing at me, Cordelia. Yeah, what? Respect and space? I give you respect and space all the time. Uh, respect? I always say it. Respect? And space. <laughs> you Trevor, never said Trevor, it. Trevor, you have almost no boundaries. What the? What the? What the? Hug? I, I'm always saying respect and space. It's how we make our friends. Respect <laughs> and space. It's, it's, it's how, how we, we make, make our, our friends. friends. <laughs> uh, Sir Fryer throws his head into, into Cordelia. Oh my god! No, no, it's, 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 it's the buoyancy of song. We're playing the buoyancy of song. She's holding his head, looking at him, yelling at her. Throw me around! <laughs> oh god! She tosses him to Albie. Albie instinctively spikes it to the ground. <laughs> 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 uh, Stofer, Stofer, Stofer rolls over to Prolapse. Oh, no, check this out. And uh, De Bonesby <laughs> takes off his skull and puts uh, Stir Fry's head on the top of the spinal column. No! Oh my god, can somebody draw a picture, please? Can someone draw a picture of this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Which you we'll, we'll, co- we'll collab. Well, let's both do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll be smiles. <laughs> Bello takes out one pencil and holds it for him and Cordelia to both hold it and draw. Cordelia just sort of placed her hand on the top of the eraser for support. Yeah. Uh, roll. Oh. Roll. Both of you make uh, intelligence rolls. Ooh. Ooh. Intelligence? Yeah, because the DM is an artist and he believes that it's intelligence that guides the hand. <laughs> I'd say it. it sure ain't the Constitution, that's a, brother. That's a 12. And an 18. A 12 and an 18? Really smart. Wow. That <laughs> You do a good job. <gasps> wow. Hello. Teamwork, huh? Yeah. 
Okay. And look, it's not perfect, but like, there's really something there. Bello and Cordelia, if either of you were to like, really focus in on this, you could become visual artists. Huh. Maybe just because of that body swap that time, we're like, oh like, yeah, gonna, like lock in a little more. I'm Can also... I keep this? Yeah, I'm... yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think we took several classes together. I know we took several classes together. Okay. Did you take drawing? Yeah. <laughs> One oh what? One. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Um, we crazy. flash back to the school. Uh, you're both in an art class. There is a uh, there is a nude model in the center of class, uh, and uh, and all of you all of you have easels. And uh, uh, Cordelia and Bello, you are uh, you are not far from each other in the class. The class is all positioned around uh, this nude model. Bello is is giving a pretty honest rendering of this model, but he has placed them atop a surfboard. Cordelia has drawn a bowl of fruit, but it's, like, right. Bello also, like, as he often does, has sort of, like, clued into the fact that all the other students in the class are every so often, like, looking his way, Mm -hmm. except for Cordelia. And he notices that Cordelia never glances at him, and he's intrigued by it. And in Cordelia's version of the memory, yeah. there is a void <laughs> in the seat where Bello sits. And a, uh, the professor, the art professor, walks by you, Cordelia, and looks at your easel and says, could you please draw the model or I will be fired? No! <laughs> she gets up and walks out. There's an open window nearby. The teacher looks out the window and says, that, that was it. That was my last chance. <laughs> I'm not going to be an art teacher anymore. Bello raises his hand. Uh, without looking, the art teacher says, yes, Bello. Do you want me to just draw a second one and then you can keep your job? They'll know. We flash back <laughs> to the present. <laughs> yeah. I think I left that class. Yeah, you did. It was It was kind of, you, you like made a big, not like a big scene, but like no one, everyone knew that that happened. Yeah. We were also in a couple study groups together, but it's not a big deal. Oh, I don't remember showing up to those. Fair. Frederick has placed the skull on Stir Fry's body. <laughs> if I had seen this like a year ago, I would have fucking flipped out. Yeah, now I'm cool with it. Now I'm cool with it. But if I had seen it a year ago, I'd flip out. Let's wrestle now. Yeah. Yes. Stir Fry's body rushes towards uh, the Bones Bee's body and jumps towards it. Stir Fry's head as furrow his brow as if running, but cannot move because he's on the Bones Bee's body. The Bones Bee doesn't move. He's confused. <laughs> A surprise body jumps, but he's having a hard time seeing exactly where he's supposed to be going. As you jump up, you are knocked out of the sky. <laughs> By a large leather clad hand, a leather glove on a hand knocks you out of a sky as an enormous man steps out from behind a tree. He is dressed in heavy chainmail armor and he wears a puka shell necklace. This uh, this man he looks to be he looks to be human, but he's enormous. Perhaps he's he's half giant or half ogre or half Goliath or something. He's just a very very big man with an incredibly dour uh, face and disposition. He knocks uh, Stir Fry down and he looks at the party and says, "Worry not, party. This monster will vex you no further." Oh. Hey hey, hold on hold on, not not monster. Part of the party. Yeah, he's our friend. Oh well, they both are. You've befriended the beast. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen. Hey, I can tell that you also follow the sunglassed path. <laughs> Excuse me. He he touches his uh, his puka shell necklace, and you can see that his face. He has a, a, a very very large face. His features are are also large, uh, and there is a uh, there is a, 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 a intense dignity in his eyes. His his small squint. He has the eyes of a hunter uh, and a furrowed brow. And uh, you can see that on his nose, he has a uh, 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 zinc oxide on his <laughs> nose. Yeah. Uh, he looks at you. And he rubs his puka shell necklace. He says, "Who are you?" My name is Bello, but. Maybe ask me this. What time is it? Of course I know what time it is. No, ask me. Why would you... Why would you... Why, what? What is this foolishness? Ask I do not me, play ask, parlor games. Ask me. You there, what time is it? Five o'clock. Yes, it's five o'clock everywhere. Sure, you know the words. Name the five tenets. <sighs> I mean... Okay. Uh, Number one, we just said it. It's five o'clock everywhere. Yes, yes. Number two... 
here for a good time, not a long time. I, we, we're travelers. All right, understood. Number three, and this is my favorite one. There is no rule number three, my dude. <laughs> yes. Number four, changes in latitude bring changes in attitude. Beautiful. But you have not completed the five. <laughs> if you stop here, you will make an enemy. Well, I guess I shouldn't stop here if I'm not in an enemy-making mood. Yes, I would scarcely recommend it. Then I'll do it. Number five. Hell, it could be my fault. Yes. And yet I doubt that it is. He kneels and he says, Comrade. <gasps> hey, dude. Yes. Hey, dude. I'm Bello. I am War Turtle Spawn. <laughs> Spone? Yes, my last name is Spone. Usually they focus on the first name. <laughs> oh my god. Poor Tartle. Just out of curiosity, uh, what's your dad's name? My dad's name? Yeah. It's none of your business. Fair enough. Blastoise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blastoise Spone. I must apologize. I, I thought you were a group of travelers beset upon by demons and monsters. No, no. They're just part of the gang. I, 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 I totally understand. You see, me and my friend here are playing with our form. Stirfry's body takes the Bonesby's head off of his body and trades it to the Bonesby's body. Lord Switcheroo! And then um, the Bonesby barfs. Fair enough. <laughs> your personal space is yours to explore. I allow it, although I find it personally and privately abhorrent. Oh. Okay. My uh, opinion's on my own. I apologize for sharing that one. No need. I'm a skeleton that just threw up. Where'd it come from? I don't know. It's too bad we didn't run into you earlier. I, like, just saw Danny Timeshare. Did you? Yeah. You you saw him. You saw Danny Timeshare. Oh, yeah. Well, he, like, he had, you know, he had, like, an assignment for me. So. I've never had the pleasure. Oh, I thought... A oh, humble I... paladin of vacationism. I've sworn an oath to defend the tenets of vacationism. Sorry, I... I... take my oath deadly seriously. All will become calm before me. None will tremble. All will breathe a sigh of relaxation. Well, that's... That... Or meet my steel! And he pulls his sword from the scabbard. Whoa! Sorry, isn't that kind of in conflict with pillar number five? Hell, it could be my fault. <laughs> yes, and he, he puts it back. I see I've met my better. I see why Danny speaks to you. And yet to me, the voice is silent. Can I ask you a question, War Turtle? War Turtle Spone is my name. Can I ask you? Spreading rest and relaxation is my duty. Question? It is not a game to me. Yes. Uh, what attracted you to vacationism? Because you seem very intense. Yes. You read me correctly. Yeah. I have been told that I'm quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Me, uh, me too. I'm not one who mixes socially. Mm. They say that the man who needs the rest most is he who is drawn to vacationism. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Well, when was your last vacation? <laughs> I am on a permanent vacation, friend. You know this. Good. And yet the irony of our faith is that I am always vigilant, always at work. Oh, well, that doesn't sound like much of a vacation at all. No, of course not. Sounds like you need a vacation from your vacation. Yes, of course I do. This has been... For time immmemorial, the, the, the theologians have gone back and forth on this one, yes. Oh, I... We won't be settling it that. tonight. I missed that. Sure, of course. You should take one, though, just, you know, for yourself. I am on a vacation right now. No, I know... Okay. There is a nine to five in my soul. Do what you love. You won't work a day in your life. Do you want... Do you want my help? Your help? Do you want me to grant you some time off? Some time off? Yeah. Friend, no. I cannot take time off right now. I know you cannot take time off, but what if it is given to you? There is quite a bit of work being done in the North West. What do you mean? The Soaking Valley. Huh? Oh. Oh, what kind of work? I've been called there. I don't know. I just know quite a lot of work is going on there. An unusual development for the Soaking Valley. Weird. We, I mean, we just did all, we just, you know, spread the good news in Toilton. We just instituted a new vacation policy there. <laughs> Incredible. They'd said Toilton was beyond reach. A lost cause. Nah, we did like five hours. <laughs> well, they did. We, we were just on vacation. It is irrelevant to me who did what. I need to journey to the Soaking Valley. I must. Okay, oh. well, have a good trip. If I fail, my life is not my own. Sure, no, we get that, but um, we were actually about to take a, a you know, a, a moment to 
pause and reflect upon the uh, the beauty of vacationism. Do you want to like have a seat for a minute? Of course. I always have time to talk about the virtues of vacationism. Great. Maybe we could find a like a shady spot. Of course. Yeah. And stir fry. Do you think you could whip whip up like a like a fruity drink? Yes, of course, Your Majesty. You, you catch my drift. <laughs> yes, yes. Tonight we will toast sangria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll fucking find some fruit for you guys. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, uh, stir fry, who has uh, uh, screwed his head back into his body, he doesn't need to screw, but hey, it's kind of fun to do it. Um, he starts. That the truth. <laughs> Hey, man. Um, oh, I get it now. Nasty. Um, uh, Stir Fries walks into the woods. They start looking for berries and other sort of fruits, uh, anything else he might find. Uh, he also looks back at Cordelia and is like, looking for berries. Just <laughs> uh, Cordelia uh, jolts and then sort of uh, lopes after him. Lopes? Yeah, like the like a lopey walk. Hmm. Like a Sasquatch. For example. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, those two go into the woods to search for fruit and berries. Why don't the remaining members of the party go around and name our favorite scents of suntan lotion? I'll go first. Coconut! (laughs) I like whatever Bello wears. It smells nice. All eyes are on Bello now. Oh, it's kind of like a patchouli. Yeah, I like it. Patchouli suntan lotion. Will wonders never cease? Well, it's sort of a mix of the two. It's sort of a blend. of. That's like my general... Earth is like a little musky. You there, creature without skin. Do you have a preference? Coconut. Coconut, yes, yes. A man after my own heart. Yeah. You are my best friends. All of us? Yes. Oh, that's cool. I will now rank you. Uh, uh, I think I know who number one's going to be. I bet you don't. It's Bello. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, you say that now. That's <laughs> true. And we, uh... The- <laughs> It's fucking God. The camera leaves this scene, this uh, award winning <laughs> uh, the best scene. Uh, this scene to follow another potentially award winning scene in the woods as no Stir Fry pressure. and Cordelia. Yeah, no pressure. Look for berries and fruits and nuts. Yeah, Stir Fry is looking around to see if he can find any fruits and berries. Um, and as he's looking around, uh, he. Uh, uh, is sort of talking from the side of his mouth to Cordelia. Yeah. He's like, uh, so you see any berries around? Uh, Cordelia looks. And makes a nature roll. <laughs> 18. Okay. <laughs> you put your hand in a bush, and it just, like, it's it's full to the brim with berries. Berries are just pouring out of this bush. I found the berries. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Ugh. Um... Can you keep a secret? <laughs> no, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> You have to tell I can me. keep a secret, yes. I can keep a secret. Come on. I don't know. Can you? Oh, my God. What happened? Nothing. Can you keep... I don't know. Swear. Oh, no. No what? You did? No, 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 no. Oh. Wait. Kind of, though. Wait, really? Kind of, though. Right. You rode flip cup like a horse? <laughs> can you keep a secret? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah. She kissed me. She kissed you? She kissed me, then I kissed her, and then we had tea in a cottage. There were there was a butterfly. It died. Butterflies? Yeah. Strange. Uh, uh, I, so are you, are, are you a thing? Look. No. I, I, okay. What? Can we not talk about it now that I brought it up? I don't have any... I wanted to tell you, because I feel like I, nah, uh, yeah, I'm no, it, bursting at the seams, but I don't actually want to... I feel, like, emotionally drained. Yeah. Fine. We don't have to talk about it. Can we go to hell? Yeah. But, I mean, like, should we just go... Do you think Bella would be convinced by this paladin guy to go to hell now? Cordelia? Yes. I think maybe... We just need to go with the flow for a little bit. Uh, We're going to die eventually. I'm normally so good at that. I know, I know, I know. What's, are you, we don't have to talk about it, but like, where are you with the group right now? Or can you? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I'm, I'm back. I'm in it because I understand that we got to do this together, but I am ready to go to where we're supposed to go. That's it. Look, I don't think we're going to be at Brian Doyle Falls very long, all right? We are here. 
Bellow's gonna get there, he's gonna see they're dead, he's gonna mourn in the way he hasn't allowed himself to mourn, and then we're gonna get out of there, we'll yeah. go back, and, 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 I'm, and, don't, and here's something I can tell you. Yes. If you can give us a good. Yeah. Uh, yes. I've decided how to make it up for everyone. I'll kill us when we need to die. Oh. And we cut back it. to the, uh, the rest of the party. And in last place is your inverted owl bear, who no one introduced me to, who watches us now from the trees. I see you, beast! His name's Flipcup. Flipcup, I see you. Flipcup, he says hi! Tell him to go fuck himself! He says hi! Yes. I see this beast is a friend. Yeah! Bello has cast uh, Weather is Here, Wish You Were Beautiful, and lit the surrounding uh, little glen that they're in, in seafoam green light. It's very relaxing and calming. Beautiful. You have made day where once there was night. Yeah. I myself lack the power. Mm. Most of my powers are offensive. Oh. Um, I'm a creature of combat, yes. So War Turtle Spawn. Yes, that's my entire name. Mm. Most call me by my first or last name. Oh, okay. Depending you... on the formality of our relationship or the situation. Well, what do you prefer? War Turtle Spawn. There is no need for me to stop you. Oh, okay. my, my dude, you're squinting a little. Do you want these? And Bello holds out a pair of sunglasses. Sunglasses? I've not achieved the rank. No, you don't need a rank. I don't need a rank? You can just wear them. This flies in the face of <laughs> vacationism dogma. I think Danny will be fine with it. He's a pretty chill guy, actually. He is? Yeah, like, I literally, I just saw him earlier, and he had, like, one quick assignment for me, and... Does he speak of his paladins? Uh, well, you gotta understand, like, Danny... He's sort of on his own clock, you know? Sure. So, like, when we hang out, it's usually not long. Like, you know, he's like, he's he's busy relaxing. Of course he is. Yeah. Of course, yes. Yes, a creature such as him, he must relax. Yeah. I see now there was no time for me. And I am honored by his, by, by his cold shoulder. So I'm curious, uh, who... Yes, our conversation was halted. <laughs> I was wondering who told you to go to the Soaking Valley. I heard tale of it. Oh, but like, from whom? What do you mean? Like, from where? The same way most of the vacationism paladins hear their news. Well, this is new to me. Interesting. A passing tropical bird told me. Oh, Oh, I speak bird now. Do you? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually, I haven't met any other, like, vacationism followers that I didn't convert. There's too few of us. Well, not in Toilton anymore. Is that so? Well, I could, yeah, I mean, they If only I could journey to Toilton and meet these folk, these relaxed people. But there's no time. I must journey northwest to the Soaking Valley. And even now, there are problems on the road. Oh. Surely you've heard about it up ahead. No, what? Up ahead, like where you came from? Like northeast? No, the direction I'm headed. Oh, where northwest. we... West. Okay. Yes. What's going on? Well, there's travelers there. They're dying. They're meeting their death. Whoa. Yes. From what? Sirens. Sirens? Yes, sirens. They lure the travelers to the rocks at dizzying speeds. <laughs> People so, run so into the rocks and are atomized. So they're like on a path, <laughs> and then they hear the sirens, and then they just race at some rocks. You on foot. haven't heard these sirens. No, I guess not. <laughs> they reach such dizzying speeds. <laughs> wow. They're dashed upon the rocks. At least they get to know that they're really fast before they die. Sure. I imagine it's cold comfort. It, it sounds like a bad way. Yes, land sirens. Yeah. Oh, they're land sirens. Yes. That makes sense if they're running. Yes, of course, there's also air sirens. Yeah. And if there are other sirens, and w- they remain undiscovered. <laughs> the air sirens are bad, too, because then you just go shooting up into the sky. You can't help yourself. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of a micro-vacation? A micro-vacation? Yeah. What is this? Well, it's you You just like take on like a vacation vibe for like a short time, like 15 minutes. You're talking about a break at work? No, I'm talking about a micro-vacation. What is this? I just said. I suppose you did, but I, I, I'm just confused. It sounds a little like a staycation. And don't say staycation to me. Why? I've drawn blood about staycations before, and I'm, I am willing to do so again, I'm... although I count you as the best of friends. Listen, I, I like, I'm on good terms with Danny, and I think he's fine with staycations. Interesting. My entire life, I cannot believe my luck in meeting you today. You are yeah. my hero. Okay. Well, then, then take these words in. I think, I think introducing uh, a micro vacation into your routine could do a lot for your 
faith. <gasps> or like meditating. Meditating. Mm. Yeah. What is this? Okay, you're almost there. So see how you're... I am? Yeah. See how how did I get here? Well, you're sitting down. Oh, yes. Now take those legs. Yes. Cross them. Or you could just firmly plant them in the ground. Uh, well, do I cross them or do I firmly plant them in the ground? Let's try crossing them first. Uh, they're crossed. Okay, now close those eyes. They're closed. Okay, now... It's uh, gone night for me. Yes, but... I miss the beautiful Hold on. blues. Wait, uh, wait. What? Imagine those blues. I'm thinking of them. Imagine... My imagination is nothing compared to reality, though. I'm imagining such dreadful shades. Stop criticizing yourself. Okay. This self-talk isn't helping. It isn't? No. All right, I will remove it. <gasps> the blues have become beautiful. Try focusing on your breathing. Yes. <gasps> oh. Now imagine those blues weren't just an abstract blue. Imagine a blue ocean. A blue ocean, yes. Like, and imagine a, a gentle coastline. I am imagining it. With a soft white sand beach. My inner critic, he speaks up again. I will silence the man. Good. Die! Okay. <laughs> From the woods, uh, I remove Stir Fry and Cordelia are just sort of standing at each other watching watching this happen. They're not like a part back of the group, they're just watching this big dude do his thing. Mouths agape, yeah. shaking their heads slightly, like just baffled. I like him. I do too. I like him. How tall do you think he is? I think he's taller than you. I think he is too. Now that's unusual these days. It's I'm always like, huh, when I come across it. <laughs> yes, as am I. You know? I'm a little like, huh. <laughs> yes, yes. So you're making fun of me? No, no, no. When I see someone taller than you, I'm always like, huh. She places her the bottom of her foot on his hip <gasps> and then just kicks him over. Uh, his entire torso falls off. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, not what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> um, he rolls onto his hands, uh, pushes himself up, and... He springs from his hands back onto his waist. What does it feel like? You know how when you pull up cotton candy, it like sticks to it a little bit, yes. and it just like flings off? Yes. But it's just still like air? But there's no connect. Oh, hang on. Give me something. Hmm. Give me one of your pieces of body, and I'll walk away, and then you tell me when it hurts. Okay. Uh, Stir Fry uh, gives her his whole arm. Great. She starts running in the other direction. Now imagine just off the coastline, there's a little island out there. Bello, I have bad news. Yeah? As soon as I stopped focusing on my dead inner critic's corpse, he disappeared. I fear this man has tricks up his sleeves and will return again. No, that's a good thing. Yeah, put him away. He's not here right now. He's not, we're, need, we're not dealing with him. I'm worried this Save agent... Save it for another day. He is an independent agent. I do not have control over him. I do not have sway. You must let him go for now. Fine. You must. I relinquish him. Thank you. Now, back to that island. Beautiful. Yes. Think about how you'd like to visit that island, but... You're not in any rush. I want to go there. I do not want to go now. Think yeah. about the trees on the island having your favorite smell. Coconut. Coconut. <gasps> the trees on the island, they have my favorite smell. Although my favorite smell is not coconut. That is simply my favorite scent of suntan lotion. Now imagine just a few feet into the These water. These trees smell like blood! No! Is that your favorite smell? Yes. Great! Then they smell like blood. And coconut. Blood and coconut. But then, coconut. The most really curious like... mix. But you realize some of that coconut smell? It's actually coming from that swim-up bar. If Enough! You... And he stands up. Cordelia's on the horizon waving an arm as if she's waving back at Stir Fry. Stir Fry, it doesn't feel good. This is starting to really hurt. This is like uh, you, you've reached too far and you can start to sort of feel it in the muscles. Ah! Uh, Stir Fry um, unconsciously falls to his knees. Oh! Cordelia sees it, jerks, and starts running back. Uh, Stir Fry sort of uses his other arm to sort of stumble back to his feet. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't run, but he sort of uh, lurches back forward. And the closer he gets, the more he sort of gets back into a normal walk. And as uh, and as he gets to a normal walk, he starts just uh, not run, but just sort of uh, you know pick up that pace a little bit when they get when he get. And then as he gets to her, he goes, <sighs> "Yeah, no, it didn't feel good when you over there." Yeah. Oh, sorry, but let's do this. And she holds up the hand for a high five. <laughs> <laughs> yes! He, 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 he slaps that hand. Um, all right. Uh, let's bring these berries back. I don't have fucking alcohol or wine, so we can't make them sangria, but we'll give, we'll, we'll give them some cherries. Okay. Bello. Yeah? I see now the wisdom of meditation. Great! Yes. Yes, I will carry this with me forward for the rest of my days. Well, Can I or I'll die like a dog! Oh. You're Albie? Yeah. That the sentence you said was, and I'm Albie? Yeah, because I was there too, and I helped. 
and she, I appreciate it. She did a really good job. She, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. You are a credit to vacationism. Oh. You hold the faith. Ah, uh, she looks at Bello. I no. No? <laughs> well, I mean, you can if you want. I don't hate it. Don't hate it? I'm not opposed to it. Bello. Yeah. You consult with these? They're my closest friends. Ah, thanks, Bell. They're my closest friends as well, but they, they don't hold the faith. Dude, I feel like you have really been slacking on Pillar 5. Yes, of course I have. It's the hardest pillar, the slipperiest pillar. And yet, I build my house on these pillars. The most solid foundation there is. A berry hits him on the head. Goodness gracious, what was that? Are we at war? Uh, no, just berries and cherries and thoughts of wine for everyone. Uh, Cordelia takes a seat on a log and sort of spreads out a bunch of berries on it. Perfect. These will go excellent in my... Wineskin of Sangria! Hey! Beast with me, friends! No, it's a party. This yes. guy came prepared. Yes. Of course I did. Who said otherwise? Nobody. No, no one. She points at Stir Fry. Why? I'm just kidding, man. He spoke foul. Why? No, I'm, s- I'm. You're kidding? Yeah. Vacation jokes. Of course. Creatures of jest. Yes, yes. Yes! Ha ha ha! Ooh, <laughs> thanks, Cordelia. Stir fries are a little like pissed. He's like, well, thanks for that one, Cordelia. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this- I admit to you now, Bird, you almost tasted my steel. Oh, uh, let's taste some sangria instead of that, unless you want to dip your sword in the sangria, and then you'll be licking the sangria off the sword. Then I'm down to taste the steel. <laughs> Good fellows, here's a buoyant one. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Are you all right, friend? Yes. Trust me, buddy. We've all met Danny Timeshare. You've all met him? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These who do not hold the faith? We swam in his pool. You swam in his pool? The infinity pool? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't. Oh. But the body has. Yeah, that's true. I stole this body from somebody who did. Daddy, I did my weird stump. Thieves and atheists, you were... You were allowed in the pool. And yet War Turtle was not. I see. I must recommit to the faith even harder than before. No, I think you're... I think you're taking it the wrong way. Do you? I do. Bello, can I make a request of you? Yeah, sure, dude. It would mean the world to me. Uh-huh. Will you fight alongside me? What? These sirens. Uh-oh. They plague travelers. You remember, Danny used to be a god of travel. Yeah, And even yeah. now, travelers hold a special place in his heart. It is told. Uh-huh. Will you help me defeat these sirens? Are they, like, close by? Several miles. I'll do it on, on one condition. Yes, name it. Name your price. I'll pay it. If it's money, I'll pay it. You gotta take a long weekend. A long weekend? Yeah. Yes. Of course. Of course. Yes. Yes! Vacation. The only solution is more vacation. Yes. Yeah. I see now why he chose you. You are the smartest person I've ever met. (laughs) Um... And your friends. Just as though they may be. Uh, Okay. These merry men. I love them. Oh, I would uh, die for any of you. Oh, you don't have to. I would. I would not give it a second thought. This is great. Yes, my blood would feed the earth. Your favorite smell. <laughs> yes, but I wouldn't be around to smell it. But wait, just now- Nor would I be in heaven. Oh. Danny makes no promise. That's true. Have you made another arrangement? No, I've been negligent in those duties. <laughs> well, who wants to think about it, right? What? I didn't <laughs> hear you. I said, who wants to think about it, right? Not I, friend, not I. I prefer to focus on the here and now. Um, speaking of the here and now. Yes. Uh, we were actually traveling <laughs> northeast. Northeast, why? Well, we're going to Brian Doyle Falls. Brian Doyle Falls, where is this? Northeast. Uh, no town I've heard of. It's sort of between Capital City and the James Woods. Capital City and the James Woods. Ah, yes, the woods ad- adjacent to the teenage woods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The woods I myself am headed towards. Oh, great. Well, okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, getting waylaid because we have a, also have a mission. My solemn oath to you is I would never waylay you Thanks. for more than a few hours. Uh, okay. So we've heard a lot about these sirens making people <laughs> dash themselves on rocks. Yes. Do you have any, like... Like any defense against that? Of course. Great. I have a bag full of wax. Uh huh. We'll put them in your ears, but you will leave my ears unwaxed. You will tie me to the mast of something so that I can fight the sirens. I must hear their song. 
Stir fry is uh, pouring sangria into tiny wooden cups and sort of passing around to everyone. Yeah, uh-huh. share the sangria. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, we'll do that. Sure, yeah, we'll put. Yeah, we'll let you hear whatever the. The wine skin never runs dry. Really? Oh. Yes. Oh, he, he he sort of doubles down, and gives everyone an extra pour. Oh, thanks. That's enough for me. <laughs> no, Albie, come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, for congratulations, <laughs> Albie. You... The calories do not count on vacation. Oh, I don't count calories. Good. None should. Yeah, see. Like, I'm a Denny Tanisher, but I'd love to have one of these. A refilling wineskin? Yeah. Oh, please, nothing compared to your... You've all met the man. Cordelia finishes her cup. Could we keep it? The wineskin? You want to take his wineskin? I am not It would be my honor to give it to Danny's chosen. You have so few pleasures. stop. (laughs) Let's take this gift. Wait, and in return, would you like some company on the way to the Teenage Woods? Of course I would. I've grown so lonely... Okay, well, we have a little friend. Do you? His name is Flipcup. The inverted owlbear in the tree who even now watches me with hate in his eyes. Although I have been assured he is a friend. Yeah. War Turtle kind of has him ranked last. Well, uh, I feel- Please, last among you is first among all others. I would be honored. Wow, gosh, we really just... Please, in my two weeks of being a vacationism paladin, I've never... What? Met- what? Two weeks? Two weeks? Yes. That's not a long time. Yes, it is to me an entire lifetime. What did you do before? I wasted my time. Oh. oh. I clocked in. I clocked out. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Doing what? Work. Oh. oh. That was a past life. Someone I'm not anymore. <sighs> well. You, did you have, like, a family? Yes. So, Strangers to me now. Did you have a son? Yes. Stranger to me now. What was his name? Squirtle Spode. <laughs> That's a beautiful name. Thank you. His mother chose it. Well, it sounds like she, uh... His mother's name was female War Turtle. <laughs> Alby just silently drinks her sangria. Stir fry pours himself another cup. <laughs> yeah. Bello takes a sip. So, um, War Turtle Spoon. Yes. So you have this mission. You want our help. Yes. Um. I think I've made my terms clear. Yeah, I think so. And all you want in return is my infinite wineskin of sangria. Yeah. Which I give to you happily, yep. proudly. Yeah. That's very sweet of you. And you have to take a long weekend. And I will take this long weekend. And? And I will rest. I will rest that they will sing about me in books somehow. <laughs> Certain special books will be capable. Like sheet music. Sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, that is it. That's how. Yeah. I was imagining magic. You <laughs> had your eyes on the practical. When I think you will zig, you zag. When I think you will zag, you zig. At every turn, you are my better. If I did not love you, I would hate pal, you. Pal, pal, hey, how about, want to take a sip? Yes, yeah. more than anything. Uh, and dip- so I will. I bring now the sangria <laughs> to my lips. <laughs> Down the hatch, old friend. I don't know if I want to know what this guy's like drunk. Oh, I do. <laughs> it's exactly the same. <laughs> wow. So I'm just thinking that we should probably get on the road and like, because Bello. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, we want to go see Wait, Brian. Yeah. No, you're totally right, B. But we're going to do the sirens, right? Yeah, we gotta That's do this, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Friends, I raise now a toast to doing the sirens on three. One, two, three. Doing, doing the, the sirens! sirens! Hey, you, it's me, Producer Taylor, reminding you that me am have something to you to say. And it's this. Branson, our DM, Dirty Mommy, has made a TV show that you can watch right now for free. Did you know this? Did you hear about this? It's called Swan Boy. It's on Hulu, a website. And it's the only show that answers the question, what if there was a show called Swan Boy on Hulu? And the answer to that question is, good idea, friend. And did you know that there are no ads on it and Branson didn't and doesn't get paid to make it? He made it out of pure kindness. Let me read a statement from him. I, Branson Reese, now give the world the eternal gift of Swan Boy on Hulu.com. Not for a selfish material reward, but because my Baha'i faith calls upon me to perform works of love and beauty as an act of faith, yes, but also service to my fellow man. May Baha'u'llah bless Swan Boy and all television programs. Sincerely, Branson Reese. Isn't that wonderful, folks? And on top of all that, 
I hear it's funny. Swan Boy on Hulu.com. The com is short for commercial. And now, another thing. I'm going to instruct you towards a live event. Do you live in New York? Do you like to be happy and to have fun? Well, great news. It's been 21 years since the terrible events of 9-11, and New York is finally ready to laugh again. Specifically at Tim Platt. Live Union Hall on May 22nd. Save that date, folks, because that day, May 22nd, marks the official return to normalcy if you consider this guy and his stand-up comedy normal. Come for Tim's jokes about little bugs. Stay for Tim's jokes about Vatican II. Text your ex about how handsome Tim is in person. Surprisingly, achieve all this and more at Union Hall on May 22nd with special guest Gravedigger, the monster truck. Part truck, part monster, all Gravedigger. We fade in on an overpass, looking down on the road down below. The entire group is looking out over the road. You are just out of earshot of the sirens. All right, what's the plan, War Turtle? I, as I told you, I would be hoisted atop something, perhaps the tallest member of the group. I look now to Cordelia. Cordelia shrugs resigned and is like, yeah, okay. I, I could be tied to you. The rest of you, put this wax in your ears. I will not have the wax in my ears. And then we will march through, attacking the sirens at will. Can I just hold you to my front? I will be driven mad by their siren song. <laughs> but I'm, that's the plan either way. What? Being driven mad by their siren song? I well, think he's worried he'll harm you. Yes. Okay. I'm quite a strong man. Like he'll thrash. Huh? Yes. Yeah. I'll thrash about violently, War- killing you most likely. War turtle. Yes. Counterpoint. Yes. What if we all just put the wax in our ears and then we all just went and attacked the sirens with the wax in our ears? Oh, so there's more than enough to go around, but then how would I be tied to the mast of something? How would I hear their siren song? Why do you want to hear their siren song? I just want... That's what I want. I want to hear the siren you- song. Oh... Oh! And I want to kill the Wait, sirens. Wait, he, he wants to enjoy himself. Oh, Cordelia. I think that, right? You had to say the magic word. He wants to relax and experience... <sighs> By running and Yes, that's good. Tie it into vacationism. Yes. This is as close as I'm going to get. Good time to the big bird. Oh, what? the flip cup? Yeah. Hey, flip cup. What? How do you feel about having this guy tied to you? He's my least favorite person! Oh! Look about his eyes! I don't like! I don't think that's gonna work. Gord, Gord, you're the one that brought up enjoying himself. I think you gotta take one. Yep. He kneels before you. Will you do it? Will you do me the honor oh my of God. restraining me? <laughs> it is extremely likely that I will be driven insane and I will try to kill you successfully. She's like, <laughs> she's like blushing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You will. Sure, why not? I'm here for it. Yes, restrain me, as I do not wax my own ears. Bello leans over to Stir Fry, and he's like, are you seeing this? I am seeing these. <sighs> Wild. Um, okay, so we put in, we put wax in our ears right now. Yes. Do you have, you said you had a bag full of wax? Yes, I have two bags full, one on each side of my pants. There are those who call them pockets. I am among them. Albie. Reach now into my pockets and grab a glob of wax, splitting it into two or three, depending on the shape of your head. Al- yeah, Bella. Albie, could you put the wax in my ears? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, Albie reaches in and picks out a big, a good-sized glob. A massive glob of wax is now missing from my pocket, as I instructed. And she. All is going according to plan. She. <laughs> She uh, rolls it finely between her fingers, and she makes four little plugs. And These sirens won't know what hit them. She places... Uh, it will be my blade! She places two in Bellow's ears. Oh, thanks. And then she puts... Do you want me to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bellow takes the two balls of wax mm-hmm. and puts them in Albie's ears. Stirfry makes eye contact with Cordelia. 
Do you want me to put them in your ears? Uh, <laughs> well, actually, okay. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It's incredible. The placing of the wax has taken on an enormous erotic charge. <laughs> I have a question. I'm reminded now of my marital bed, which I forsake. Stir fry can't Forsoke. hear. Forsoke. 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 Forsook. Forsook. Put that wax in deeper. Oh, sorry. Uh, hey, uh, War Tortle. War Tortle Spone is my name. Yes, I know your name. Blastoise Spone is my father's name. And Squirtle Spone is your son's. Yes. Do you, I have a question. Do you think that Mr. DeBonesby, uh, since he doesn't technically have ears, do you think he has to wax them? Uh, he is currently rubbing the wax over the sides of his skulls. And he's going, I don't know. We'll see what happens if I believe it might be magic. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Everything is going according to plan. You there now, the tallest one, Cordelia. Yeah. Whose name I briefly forgot. That's <laughs> my name. Yes. Cordelia Sasquatch is who I am. Yes. I can see you. I'm still able to communicate with you, though. Is the wax in your ears. No, Stripper hasn't put it in yet. All right, you will go last. Okay. I'm trusting you to keep me restrained. If you are to let go of me, I will lose my mind. I- Most likely I will kill you, and I will rush towards those rocks at dizzying speeds. In what way are you most comfortable being on me? It, or, am I carrying you like a baby? However you will have me. I'm a large man, although I am shorter than you. Yet, I am broader, and so there are those who think of me t- as taller. Cordelia, carry him like a baby. Okay. I think, I think I, that'll be the most restful for him. Like a bride? Or, or like like, no, like front? A, like his legs around my st- my bed. I once carried a bride. A Just like life. you're giving him uppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see your gestures. I see your confused face. Yeah. Try now to lift me. Okay. What do I Make play? a strength roll with disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Ten. You go to lift me. Nothing happens. Although it does not feel good. Oh. You I'm go- sorry. I'm a broad man. You're a very broad man. Broad, dense, thick, tall. <laughs> to say nothing of my girth. <laughs> I think you spoke to it. Yes. Um, I can't pick you up. No. What are we going to do? Perhaps I could ride you. Uh, sure. Okay, yeah. Let's try piggyback. All right. I will piggyback you. Make another strength roll. Nine. Nine. Yeah. This is a disaster. This is, ouch. Perhaps? Maybe maybe you should think of a different plan? No. No, never. Or I could, but do I'm not. Yet. No, it's okay. It's okay. I got it. I got it, guys. And then Bellow, who wild shapes into a little horsey. There it JK, is. JK, a big horsey. Okay. <laughs> Stripper takes the wax out of his ears. We've all been talking. I-, I thought we were doing the wax thing. What's happening? We're just trying to figure out what to do with War Turtle. They've basically been guessing what the others are saying. With I- Stunning accuracy. I can still kind of hear it's just really muted, and I'm reading lips. Okay, so if we're all going to put the wax in, can you do it at the same time so no, no not, the wax one of us doesn't in. feel so one of us doesn't feel left out? Okay, I got wax. I, okay, I'm gonna. Although go. there are emotional advantages to that, there are tactical disadvantages. Stir-fry Which kid. is it, bird? Which do you value more? Uh, the, um, the emotional. I, I'm always down for an emotional advantage, and I've always found that emotional advantage is a tactical advantage, especially when one works with a group like these groups of friends I'm part of right now. Your resilience. Humbles me. Oh, humility. That's my favorite virtue. Um, Bello, as a horse, is going to move his head down towards Albie, mm-hmm. and he's going to say, Hey, I hope I hope I didn't put the wax in too hard. Huh? I said I hope I didn't put the wax in too hard. I'm good. Great. She pats his nose. Ready yourself, Steed, I mount you now. Oh. You there, Cordelia, wax into the ears now. And in they go. Stripper puts the wax back into his ears. Um, Cordelia, as she puts the wax into her ears, realizes that uh, it's a very familiar shape. She reaches down into her chest and realizes she has what appear to be sort of two two earplugs that she sort of sets at the ready for herself. She also realizes that it's almost like somebody opened a window and everything is knocked over. She assumes De Bonesby had just like knocked everything down and the garbage ban is knocked over and all of the spells are now disoriented again, so she'll have to go pick that up later. Look now! There! To the ground! And he, uh, uh, War Turtle Spone points to the ground and you see travelers are on the road. Those poor innocent souls will be dashed upon the rocks at dizzy speeds. We must go now and intercept! He, uh, 
hops onto Bellow's back, pulls out rope that he has. He looks at the groups. Can't believe they didn't have rope. He ties himself around Bellow tightly. Oh, he's snugly tied to you. Ooh. The heavy man. LPE oh. checks the knots and makes sure. It's They're good. He did a good job. He looks at you and says, "Trust me next time." And he smacks Bellow on the ass. He <laughs> Charge, my king! Bellow charges. All right, you head down the hill through the woods, and uh, the rest of the group follows Bellow. But Bellow is way ahead. You guys, all you can hear are your own heartbeats in your head as you uh, you run down through the woods into the road. And uh, up ahead, you see a cart traveling. Bellow, uh, you are heading straight towards the, the cart. And War Turtle Spawn, he's going to pull his sword uh, from his scabbard. And he's going to scream, uh, fools, fools, idiots, turn around now or you'll be killed. The cart, it, it stops, and then the, uh, the, the driver of the cart looks around, hears the siren song, jumps from the horses as the doors of the cart open, and the uh, four humans dressed very finely, they're wearing very nice clothes, they all get out of the cart, and they run towards the rocks at dizzying speeds. Fine red mist as they hit the rocks. <laughs> War Turtle's spawn calls out, No! No! We were too late! Fine then, we will regroup! We must now kill the sirens! <laughs> gonna grab Bellow by the ears and just kind of uh. try to steer him. Uh. Up, back, up, up! We must go up and we must face the sirens at the top of the cliffs. The cliffs! The cliffs which bookmark this very road! These cliffs? These very cliffs! You shouldn't be able to hear me! I can hear you a little! Ah, I'm sure you sense my vibrations in your chest. That's not what hearing is. Sensing vibrations, that's different than hearing. Yup. Aha! My hero agrees with me! Upward! Onwards and upwards to kill! And he's going to- oh. He's going to gesture to the party. He's going to put two fingers together and pull them apart, uh, gesturing to the gr group to split. Uh, and he's going to gesture now at both ends of, uh, of these cliffs. And he's going to- uh, he, With Bellow, he's going to take the left. Uh, and he's going to point to the rest of the group and point them, uh, point them towards the right. And there are there are little paths off the roads that you can the same ones that you the same one that you ran down. There's another the, to the other side. You can run back up, uh, so you can you can flank around and find these sirens. Stir Fry runs to the right where he was guiding. Cordelia hot on his heels. Great. So we're all running off in uh, in that direction right now. Uh, War Turtle Spawn and Bellow, you are heading up uh, the side of the cliff, and uh, you you feel War Turtle Spawn. He's tied to you, and he's saying something to you, Bellow. He, he's saying, ah, "This is it. The thrill of battle with my hero <laughs> would be an honor to die this way." Huh? Yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys all head up, and as you get up, it, it, it takes a minute. You gotta go right back up the way you were going, and you were going downhill before, you are going a lot faster. But now, you're going up, 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 and it's getting harder and harder and harder, and you gotta turn back around, and you can now finally, cleanly see now for the first time. Even though it is night, it has been night this entire time, They the, the moonlight hits them like a spotlight. There are two sirens on either side of the rocks. They are absolutely stunning. Ooh, these women are beautiful. They have long albatross wings coming out of their shoulders. Their hair is messy, unkempt, but oh, it's working. And uh, their mouths are open. Their eyes look wild and, and, and feral as they, they sing. They sing out. You, you can faintly, you can hear the vibration of their songs in your chest, and it's good. It's nice. It's a beautiful song that they're singing. The song is so beautiful. It lures travelers. The second they hear it, they just want to get closer to the song, and they run at dizzy <laughs> speeds, and they hit the rock, <laughs> killing themselves. That's how nice this song is! So, Branson, there's no kind of natural barrier between us and the rocks? Like, we can easily get to them? No, there is no barrier whatsoever. Those sirens are there right in front of you. Okay, 
Albie's gonna charge at the one closest to her. Absolutely, there is only one close to you. Remember, the other's on the okay. other side of the road, and there's a sheer drop. Uh, it's probably a drop of about fifty or sixty feet. It's a lot. These are large cliffs uh, that, that flank this road, so it's gonna be very difficult. I mean, it's at least a, a forty foot uh, uh, chasm between the two. It's gonna be very, very difficult to get from one to the other. I already looked at your sheets, so I know what you can <laughs> and can't jump across. Uh, it's about forty feet, and uh, it's like slowly. You no, know? um, so. You see the one closest to you. She isn't looking at you. She's just singing. She her uh, her jaw is unhinged, like a snake eating an ostrich's egg, and uh, music is pouring out. And as you get closer, the vibrations of the song of her music you can start to feel it in you just a little bit. I'll be feeling the mounting vibrations coming from the siren as she gets closer. For the first time since discovering her rage, calmly and coolly enters into one. Turning up the volume on her own personal drumming, she drowns out the sound of the siren and she slips into a rage. Like she's moving through water, she smoothly reaches back, pulls her butcher's sword out to strike, and moves towards the siren. Great, the siren is going to see you and for the first time uh, you catch her eye, she turns and sees you and she, oh my God, oh yeah, she's nice to look at. She, uh, she, she looks at you and she is going to, uh, she opens the palms of her hand and you see she has claws for hands and she is going to uh, put them into fists and hit the ground very hard, sending vibrations up to you that travel through your hooves and your wax begins to, uh, to shake and to vibrate and it is knocked ever so slightly loose and you can just hear a little whisper of her song that she continues to sing to you. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 11. 11. That is actually not going to cut it. So, Albie, while you hear the song, and it, it is impossible to ignore, you just want to get closer to that song. You are drawn to this siren. You are charging faster and faster towards this very siren. Uh, her fists are on the ground, and you now can make an attack. Without breaking her stride, Albie feels the vibrations move through the earth towards her from the siren. She stomps her hoof deep into the ground, sending her own ripples back at the siren, trying to unseat her. Uh, the siren is thrown a little, and her wings are going to unfurl. Uh, she's going to take an attack on you. She is now moving within your personal range. She is, like, within your, you know, your zone. You know, she's within a few feet of you right now. She's flying at you, and she's going to begin clawing at your ears. She is going for that, uh, for that whack. She wants to do, she wants your ears. Okay. Uh, and so she's going to make an attack roll on your head. It's going to be a 16. My armor class is 16. She brings her claws to the side of your head and she's like reaching for your ears. She's confused by why you're not reacting more strongly uh, to her song now. Because remember, a little bit of wax was knocked forward. That All that did was bring you closer to her. She's used to people like losing their minds and running to the rock. So she doesn't understand what's happening now. So she's trying to investigate your ears uh, the way that like a cat would play with a mouse or something. She's very large is the other thing. Albie, she's about three times the size of you. Uh, I know you're little, but that's still pretty big. Yeah. Um, she's uh, she's probably about the size of like a big cat or so, like a like a lion or a tiger uh, or some sort. Uh, and so she's just trying to investigate your head. And she is, um, even though you're okay, she is going to do three damage to the head, just through sort of ambient damage to the head. Okay. Albie is going to buck her head, trying to shove the siren away with her antler. And uh, and she's going to follow up with a swing from her, her unarmed fist. Okay, great. So you buck and you hit. I mean, she's right there on your head. She's investigating your head. And you buck with the antler. She didn't see that coming. And you're going to, uh, you actually get her in the jaw, closing her mouth very briefly. And the vibration uh, it continues to vibrate in her throat, but it does not emerge. Uh, and then she opens it right away. And as you take your swing, uh, she's reorienting. And she, uh, she, with her wings, she sort of like, she crushes her wings forward and she flies back and you fly back as well. She is now floating above the ground and her wings, her large, long, much longer than a real albatross, uh, but albatross style wings, uh, she's floating above the rock, the rocky cliff that you're on. Okay, so we cut back now over to the other side of the cliff and uh, uh, um, War Turtle Spone and Bellow, you're both charging the siren. The siren saw what was happening on the other side, and it sees you now coming, and it is it is ready for you. She is ready for you, and uh, she spreads her wings, and she looks at you with an intense look, and she opens her mouth even larger, even wider, and she begins singing directly at you. War Turtle Spone needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Absolutely beefs it. 
And uh, War Turtle Spoon begins saying, No, the song, the beautiful song, the beautiful music, fellow, let me off, let me off, I want to go close to the music. No. <laughs> no, let me off, please, please. No, you said not to. It's your turn. Okay. I mean, Bello is a horse right now. I don't have a lot of other options, so Bello is going to just keep keep the charge going. He's going to head towards the siren that they're heading for. He also, out of the corner of his eye, sees the other siren attacking Alby, and he calls out, B! But yeah, Bello can only do horse stuff, so Bello's charging. Great, so you charge, make an attack roll with that charge as a horse. All right. That's a five. Five. You completely miss. Um, you are running directly at this siren, and uh, her wings unfurl, and she just flies directly above you. You charge past her, and she's just right. She's a few feet above you, and you're actually gonna. That's gonna trigger an opportunity attack. She's gonna reach down, and she's gonna swipe at War Turtle Spone for five damage. Um, he's a large man, and he's wearing chainmail armor, but still, she is going to just like she takes a swipe at him with her claws, and little bits of chain just go flying everywhere as War Turtle Spone uh, says, "No, no, I want to hear the music." He's now going to take an attack on you, Bello, because he wants, as he warned you a number of times, he was driven mad instantly by this, and he uh, he wants to be free and he wants to get close to the music. He's going to make an attack roll on Bello. Bello, he did get a nat twenty on that one. <laughs> So, he's not thinking straight, though. He doesn't reach for his weapon, and he does make an unarmed attack on Bello for... He does seven damage to the horse. Uh, Bello, he's going to uh, to grab at the horse's ears, and he's just going to pull and pull. He's going to listen, listen! You haven't listened! The music is beautiful, beautiful! He's going to pull on your ears, trying to loosen the wax, so that okay. he wants you to hear the music. He's trying to help. Oh, he still okay. loves you. He wants you to hear the music that he can hear. Okay. Um, and that is going to loosen the wax. Now, Bello, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Nat 20. Nat 20. So you can hear the music of the siren, and you got to admit, that is a nice song. It it's, is, it's a good jam. But it's not the melody that's doing The melody is pleasant enough, but it's something about the vocal quality. You now know this. It's, the, it's not the song itself. You could sing this song, and it wouldn't drive somebody crazy. It's something about the physiology of these sirens, that coming out of their throats, that's what's doing it. And you realize that it's the throats. The throats are the problem. Never before has Bella been so wise. Maybe never again. Uh, and that it is. Uh, so that was War Turtle Spone's turn. He took his attack, and now it is uh, prolapse. I would like to coordinate something with Stir Fry. Great, you can use your turn for that. Prolapse waves to get Stir Fry's attention, and then gestures to hide behind a tree. Uh, Stir Fry follows uh, where the finger is pointed. Prolapse then summons the dark magical energies within his bones. Nearby the tree, from nothing we see. What's this? A man sitting in an auditorium seat, listening, enjoying music, but not running to the rocks? The siren sees the man immediately, and the siren is going to fly towards the man now. The siren starts flying towards that man, going louder and louder and louder. The siren wants to share this song uh, with the man. The siren doesn't believe that what what she's doing is even evil. She just wants to share the song uh, with this man, but the man doesn't seem to be moving. He doesn't seem to be doing anything other than enjoying music at his own pace. Stirfry sees that the siren is preoccupied, and he makes a sneak attack. He takes out his crossbow and, with advantage, fires at the siren's head. Ooh, that's a 24. Um, so I'm going to roll my uh, my D8 plus 5 and then do my 3D6. Oh, baby, that's a total of 19. 19 damage. That's going to hit her in the throat, and a geyser of blood goes flying from her throat. She looks completely confused, and you can see the vibration. I mean, her throat is just like vibrating, and it stops. It stops completely silent. Yes! Yes! Oh, Pro Tools, my boy! Yes! <laughs> no, we did it! We did it! I'm so smart! Cordelia, it's your turn. With her initiative, she turns tail and runs. She sprints back down the hill and up towards where uh, Bello and War Turtle are. Okay, great. That's quite a bit of distance. So on this one turn, you're only going to be able to get down to the bottom of the hill. So you went up the hill, you saw the siren get taken care of, and you're going to head right back down to the uh, uh, to the bottom of the hill. You are now in the road in between two sheer peaks, and there is another siren on the other end up there, which is now, once again, dealing with uh, Bello and War Turtle. That siren is going to... Uh, it sees that War Turtle 
idol is is torn by the song and it's just going to sing it's going to use its turn to just fly above it spreads its wings beautifully strikes a beautiful pose it's unkempt oh the, the beachy the oh my god the hair oh my it's incredible it looks really and it's like oh and it's like lit by the moonlight in such a way and it sounds so nice and it just keeps singing and war turtle is losing his mind even more and more and more bello it's your turn Knowing that War Turtle's ears are unblocked, uh, Bello is going to yell out and say, War Turtle, hey, that song is in the throat. You gotta get in that throat. I would love to get in that throat. I would do anything to be there at the source of the music that you... Bello, you have to listen! You have to listen! And he's going to use his turn now to try to pull the wax out of your ears. He just wants you to hear the music. He loves you so much. Huh? He's going to reach in, and he is going to make... And this is going to count as an attack roll. What's your AC? Thir- <laughs> I rolled a three. Uh, uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. He's going to be just shy of that. He's a pretty good attack. But, uh, but he he reaches for your ears, and he's just so distracted by the music that he just he reaches for your ears. He's, uh, Bello, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Bello, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. My spirit is weak. I see that you are my better, and you always have been. I'm sorry. You are my hero, but I have to be near the music. He's going to reach down and begin untying uh, the knot that he tied. Hey! <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, it's Albie's turn. Okay, so the uh, the siren has turned away from me, and she's got a bleeding throat. She's stopped singing for the moment. Yeah, she has stopped singing. Okay, Albie's going to wheel around, see the siren near her friends, run towards her, slashing her between the shoulder blades. Great, and the, right between the shoulder blades, that's where the wings are, and you're gonna do, uh, for that much damage, uh, you, you get right in there, and uh, is this the butcher sword? Yeah. Okay, so with the butcher sword, you're gonna hit her right in the back, and her, her entire back arches and stiffens up, and she uh, she goes to shriek, and more blood just comes out of her throat. There's no sound coming out of her throat. And her wings, uh, one of her wings is, uh, you can see the tendons and the, the, the sinewy flesh uh, that's sort of connecting the wing to her shoulder, and and you see that you've done damage there, and it's unclear if she'll ever be able to fly in a straight line again. Uh, she goes to shriek in pain, and more blood comes out of her throat, and she looks around at you with a panicked look in her eyes. Uh, it is now... Uh, oh, it's now that siren's turn. Uh, she turns around. She's in confusion in her eyes. She doesn't understand why you did this. She's just trying to share her song with you. Sure, it makes people explode on the rocks, but that's a small price to pay for hearing the song. She's so confused. She doesn't know what else to do. She lashes out, and she's going to slash at you. Four... Seven damage. Albie, as though the siren is moving in slow motion, sidesteps from the slash. The slash is still coming at you. It's slow motion, but that's slow motion of a very, very fast attack at very, very close range. The middle uh, claw, the middle finger on the claw, does catch you on the cheekbone, and it's going to do three damage across the cheekbone. Albie looks cool as hell. Now it's Prolapse's turn. Prolapse, what are you going to do? I'm going to light her on fire! And uh, Prolapse unleashes a torrent of flame from his bony fingertips. All right. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, no, I'm a bald wizard. <laughs> Prolapse screams, unleashes a flaming bolt that circles in a perfect little curly cue and bumps him in the butt. Great. Yeah, the, uh, the flame goes around and hits him in the butt. You... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, you you jump around a little bit, and there's a little bit of steam coming off of the your tailbone. Ah, oh, boy, I just got too full of myself. I'm still a baby wizard. Stirfry, seeing his friend Albie still engaged in battle, tries to join in and take this siren down. Stirfry loads the air into his crossbow and points this time into the at the forehead of this siren. He squints, squints. Without the sound, it's a little bit harder, but you know what? He's a professional. He focuses straight upon that forehead and then fires. Four. 22 damage. You do 22 damage to this thing's forehead. That arrow just goes clean through, just like a hot knife through butter. It just it enters the, the front of the skull, right, right between the eyes, and it goes out through the back. The siren looks at you, confused. The siren doesn't know what she did wrong. It falls over dead. Shepherd goes, I know. I love you. <laughs> Cordelia, you're at a crossroads, sort of. You're actually at one long straight road, but on either side of you are sheer cliffs. To your left, you see a horrible battle. There's flames up there. You can't quite make out the details, but the siren and most of your friends are over there. On the other side is Bellow the Horse 
War Turtle Spawn, and a siren flying higher and higher. You can see War Turtle Spawn, a big man by any standard, except the standard of giants and gods, reaching out for the siren. And you can also see another hand of his reaching down towards Bello. He's trying to untie himself. Branson, how far are they away from Cordelia? They're pretty far. Remember, I said they're about 60 feet up, and it's about 40 feet across. Cordelia looks left where she just left her friends. She feels confident they've got it handled. She looks right to where Bello is on his own, and they're not supposed to split up, so she runs towards him. And up the hill you go. You're heading now towards Bello, and it's, it's steep. It's steep. There is a path up that hill, and you're taking that path now. And as you get closer and closer and closer, the camera speeds ahead of you. We're going much faster now. We're over there with the Siren and War Turtle Spawn and Bello. They are all together. The Siren is using its turn once again to sing even louder and louder and louder. Bello doesn't want War Turtle Spawn to untie himself, but he wants War Turtle Spawn to be so driven mad and with no rocks in the way just get at that throat and hopefully take care of the problem mm -hmm. so Bello is going to rear up on his hind legs and he's going to take a big horse jump up into the sky yeah make a horse roll for me of course <laughs> That's an 18 horse roll. 18 horse roll. You don't see a lot of those. Uh, so with an 18, uh, you rear up, and it's a beautiful sight. The moonlight is out, and it is a full moon. Werewolf fans might want to look around. <laughs> 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 You'll find them. <laughs> they, they, they're rare, but you, know, you never know. Um, and your, your mane is caught in the moonlight. And as you rear up, War Turtle Spawn, the rope loosens. And War Turtle Spawn is able to, he sees now that you guys are a team. And he knows, he knows that you're trying to help him. And he leaps off of you now. You're going to take like four damage from that. He's a very heavy man. Oh. You, He's going to leap off, and he's leaping at the siren. He grabs the siren's ankles. And that's all he's able to do. He begins slowly pulling the siren down. She's a very large and a very strong creature, and those are very wide wings, but he is a dense man, a thick man, a man of immense girth. And slowly, he begins pulling the siren down, slower and slower and slower, but they are, they're moving downwards, back down to the top of the cliff where you are. Cordelia, as you crest the cliff now, you're able to see it. The most beautiful sight you've ever seen in your life. If you're me, I don't know what Cordelia's seen, but I know it's for me. This is incredible. A beautiful blue horse. Hot, and I don't say it, a hot horse. Some of the horses have to be hot, and this is one of them. Bello is reared up on his hind legs, and you can see, you see it all as War Turtle Spawn is dragging the siren down, down, down. Cordelia says, I had a beautiful trapper keeper like this, and she reaches into her bag of spells at her chest, and she pulls out two earplug-shaped spells, which is deafness, and she casts it on War Turtle. War Turtle Spawn is deafened. He is deafened, and you see, uh, he, he wheels around. He is facing you the entire time. He looks at you with a look of betrayal on his face. He just wanted to hear this sound. And then it, it, it's gone, and there's a flicker of understanding as War Turtle Spawn's. Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. And he lets go. War Turtle Spawn, he falls back down onto Bello, doing eight damage to Bello, but oh. Bello, Bello is still reared up, creating a ramp that War Turtle Spawn slides down. He, uh, it's, it's almost like a, a drawing of Bellows back at school as he just, like, surfs back down. And his head is very big, like a caricature. <laughs> Unfortunately, his body is very big, unlike a caricature. As he slides down the back of Bello, uh, he lands in a pile, uh, and he looks up at Cordelia and he says, Cordelia, thank you. As War Turtle crumples to the ground, Cordelia continues to sprint towards Bello. She sees the ramp of his back and runs one foot, the next foot, the next, until she reaches up to the siren's level and punches her in the face.
and you smash the siren in the face, knocking her over uh, backwards. She's knocked uneven, and uh, she lands back down on the ground. Uh, she does a three-point landing, and her wings unfurl, and again, the moonlight catches it all. She looks cool as hell. This is Cordelia. I. It's none of my business, but this has got to be, if I'm wrong, that's insane. This has got to be one of the coolest people you've ever seen. I am... Yeah, Cordelia is, uh, <laughs> Cordelia wipes the saliva off her face, <laughs> uh, and then she turns to Bello to make sure he's okay. Bello looks like a beat-up horse. Bello- <laughs> Ooh. Not one of the better sights. Oh, no, Bello, Bello has, like, a, Bello has some, like, bruising on his back. Bello has, like, a, a horse shiner in his one eye. He, he, he's, he's taking some damage. Cordelia's gonna look to Bello, she's gonna cup her hands around her mouth in an attempt to get him to hear and say, do you want to trample her? Yes. Okay, Cordelia takes a big step back to give him room. And Bellow's going to collect himself, do a little, like, horse, like, hind leg scraping the ground, and then he's gonna run at her. Uh, yeah, she just goes into a defensive, uh, position. She doesn't move from the three-point stance, and she unhinges her jaw. She is just shooting sound waves at you as hard as she can. Uh, this is coming at you so hard and so forceful that I need you to make another wisdom saving throw. That's a 10. That's a 10? Yeah. As you run forward, the wax melts out of your ear. It vibrates so loud. She's going so loud, the wax melts, and it just is like fucking like an earwax extraction video. There, nice. You know, the, it just it moves out of your horse ears, and you are able to hear the song mm-hmm. in all of its beauty. And you like it. Bello hears this sound. Bello hears this song in full for the first time, and he's no longer able to think about it critically. It's all he can think about. It's overpowering. It's all he wants. It's all he needs. It's all he's ever needed. And then, as he's running, the, he, he, he's no longer running with a uh, purpose of anger. He's running with, with desire, with need. He gets a horse nosebleed. Fuck. The siren unfurls her wings, and as you get closer, she's going to fly up above you, and she's going to strategically move out into the center of the ravine with the sh- the the forty foot. Remember the forty foot mm-hmm. ravine and the sixty foot drop. She flies out above that, and she allows herself to be illuminated by the moonlight. She is she knows her angles. Yeah. Bello, there is a clear path in between you and her. Granted, I'm running straight for her, right in that gap the cliffs. I'm running for her at dizzying speeds. I'm running at her like it's my job. And the second you do that, you hear the distant sound of a steel drum as War Turtle Spone casts on the clock. As an action, he speaks a prayer censuring the employee. Each worker who can see or hear him within 30 feet of him must make a charisma saving throw. If you fail the saving throw, you are turned for one minute make that charisma saving throw. I got a 17. Now will you hear the distant sound of steel drums? Yeah. As War Turtle Spoon calls out, he casts on the clock as an action. He speaks a prayer censuring the employed. He calls out to you, says, Bello, please, I beg of you, take a break. Please, a three-day weekend, something, I'm begging you. No time for that. I'm on the clock. Bello reaches the edge of the cliff. Yeah. And he's going to take a big horse jump into the air. And as he does, he's going to wild shape out of horse, back into his normal form, and embrace the siren. The siren catches you in her arms. beautiful moment. This is what she's always wanted. This is the dream of a siren. They're such lonely creatures. They call out to travelers. They want to embrace the travelers. They hate when they're, they run at dizzying speeds and are dashed upon the rocks. She embraces you. I love your song. She stops singing. No song is coming out of her throat anymore. She says, thank you. Thank you, traveler. I'm not just saying that. It was really good. No, I know. Yeah. What did you, did you have? Did you like? You liked? I liked it a lot. You have any notes? No notes. Why are you guys attacking us? 
um, uh. And you are just floating. You are 60 yeah, yeah, feet yeah, above yeah. the ground. Her wings are gently carrying you. You feel completely yeah, at peace. Bello has no, Bello has, is paying no attention to anything else. She's got you. You are still under yeah. her spell. Yeah, totally. Creature, why were you attacking us? All those people were dying. That was, you killed my mother. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. We look the same. Yeah. Well, not anymore. I'm sorry. Creature. Yeah. I'm Bello. Bello? Yeah. I have no name. Oh. We're too busy singing to name each other. Oh. I just, um... I... It's never come to this. Oh. We've literally... I am the first siren to ever get to this point. Wow. Yes. Are, is that, are you glad? I am overwhelmed. Wow. I have never done this. You know what? You should... This we don't have time to reproduce. We all hatched out of one big egg. Oh. And now you're thinking the mother thing, right? Uh -huh. She hatched before me. She came out uh -huh. first. Mother. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is interesting because I'm actually into this thing called vacation. Yes. And I wonder if, like, occasionally if sirens took vacations, maybe there wouldn't be so many people running at dizzying speeds towards the cliffs. They maybe always run at dizzying speeds towards yeah, the cliffs. Yeah. Yes, they want to hear the song. Oh, yeah. We want I, to share the song. They're right to, because it's so good. And you couldn't blame them. No. We never do. But if you paused, maybe people could stop and, like, actually take a moment and think about how much they like the song and appreciate it. And, you know, they, you could be, uh, you could be a big hit. A big hit, is it? Yeah. Bello, will you be my mate? Hell yeah. Together we can... Really? What? I, does Bello have any, like, defense against this woman? Right? He feels he's totally, like, under yeah, her spell. Yeah, you're under her spell. Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah. She's gonna turn the spell off. Oh. Tell it to me real. Yeah? Will you be my mate? Together oh. you and I could hatch the second egg. Sirens came from the first. There's no telling what you and I could make. Your song was really good, but... I don't... That butt said a lot. Yeah. There's just someone else, kind of, right now. It's it's a little complicated, but, like, it, I don't know. I'm not in a mate. I'm not in, like, a hatching. I'm not in the a place Sasquatch. where... The Sasquatch. The large Sasquatch. Uh, no. But, like, kind of. She's involved. She's involved. Yeah. It's a morass, you know? It's a morass, is it? It's just very complicated. And so it's a no. I'm just not in a place to, like, have an egg. Right you are now. the first person to say no to a siren. And you will be the last. Good luck. What? Oh, I hope you find someone that's ready to have an egg with you. I will. Great. Good luck, you. She's gonna fly back. Now, she's gonna fly you back over uh, towards Cordelia. She looks at Cordelia, and she looks at War Turtle Spell, and she says, Good luck with the morass. What? I... Okay, thank you. Yes, I will go now. I will take my break, and then I will begin again, singing my song near Cliv's. I see it now, yes! And she flies off. Hey, wait! No! Do you want a name? No! Stephanie! Off in the distance, she's already, she's flying into the moon. Not into the moon, literally, but you know, from your perspective. <laughs> she's flying towards the moon, she's getting smaller and smaller, and you hear, Stephanie! <laughs> what? I just named her, I think. What? Have you ever met a Stephanie? Yeah. What was her deal? She was in our drawing 101 class. I don't remember anyone from that class. <laughs> ah, yes. Quite the rude tale, indeed. That was Ali Fisher as Cordelia, Carly Monardo as Alby, Christopher Hastings as Frederick de Bonesby. Tim Platt as Stir Fry, Joe Lepore as Bello, and Branson Reese as everything and everyone else. Rude Tales of Magic is produced by Taylor Moore at Fortunate Horse. He sounds nice. With additional sound design by Michael Gelfi, and with the infinite dark beneficence of Sidney and Benjamin Paul. See you next time, weary traveler, when you most desire even more rude tales of magic.